By far, my favorite window manager, certainly my favorite floating window manager, is the OpenBox window manager. Love it. OpenBox is light, blazing fast, highly customizable. So today, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to install an OpenBox session on top of Arch Linux. I have a base Arch Linux install. I've already run through the base install, uh, where you read the wiki and you go through all the steps to get the base installation done of Arch, but I have not installed Xorg. I haven't created any kind of graphical environment of any kind. It's still basically just a server at this point. So today I'm going to go ahead and set up a proper desktop on this base install of Arch Linux I have, and I'm going to go with the OpenBox window manager. So let's get started. All right, so I have, let's see, uh, that's the Arch Wiki. I'll come back to that here in a minute. But uh, about, I don't know, three weeks ago, four weeks ago on the channel, I did a installation of Arch Linux. I think I did it on a live stream. Uh, the base install of Arch Linux, I did it in like an hour and a half on a live stream. Uh, you guys can go check that out. And this is where I left off with that VM. Now, I have updated the VM since then. I've run, you know, sudo pacman dash capital S lowercase yyu to update the repos and get the latest packages. So, you know, it's updated Linux, the kernel, systemd, and a few other things. But other than that, this is pretty much where I left off. I, I went ahead and created a home user. I created a home user. I called that user dt. Uh, here I'm logged in as root, though. And... First thing we need to do is I need to go ahead and get Xorg installed, the X11 server, uh, because to have any kind of GUI, you have to have Xorg on, on your machine. So sudo pacman dash capital S for install, and then Xorg dash server, I believe is the package. Uh, sudo is not installed on the system. I didn't need sudo anyway because I'm already root. See, the very first command, I've already screwed up. All right, so there are two providers for libgl. Which one do I want to go with? The default is one, so I'll go with the default. All right, and this may take a couple of minutes to get Xorg installed. Anyway, I've got my coffee here today. It's very important to always have a cup of coffee for these kinds of things because I've installed, you know, Arch, a bunch of times and I've already passed like the hard part the base install and of course I've installed and configured OpenBox a million times so there really shouldn't be anything thrown at me that I haven't seen before but you know this is Linux you never know what's gonna happen always have coffee on hand anyway I'm gonna pause the video for for a minute let Xorg finish installing here okay so Xorg finished installing now we have the X server, so now we can install, you know, all our graphical programs, all our GUI programs. So sudo pacman dash capital S again. Some of the GUI programs I know I'm going to need, I'm going to need a login manager. I'm going to go with LightDM. So LightDM. We need a greeter screen for LightDM. So LightDM dash, uh, I'll go with the LightDM GTK greeter. So LightDM dash GTK dash greeter. That takes care of our login manager. Now our desktop environment or window manager. Today I'm going with OpenBox, so OpenBox. Also we need the OpenBox configuration manager, so OBConf, C-O-N-F, OpenBox config, space. I'm going to need a file manager. PCManFM is a great, lightweight, fast file manager. I'm going to need some kind of panel or dock. Uh, I like Tint2. T-I-N-T-2. It's a very nice, lightweight, easy to configure panel. So the Tent2 panel, you guys could also install something like the LX panel, the standard panel in LXDE, or you could go with a dock like Plank or Docky. Me, I'm going to go with Tent2. All right, so we have our login manager, window manager, file manager. We have a panel. We need a terminal. Very important. We definitely need to install a terminal emulator of some kind. Uh, Xterm is a good one to go with. Uh, I'm also going to install Termite. That's another good one. So I'll have two terminals. Just in case one doesn't work as expected. 
Uh, it's nice to have a couple of terminal emulators on the system. All right, what else do we need? Uh, I'm going to try to install everything I need up front. Uh, I'm going to have to set wallpaper. So Nitrogen is a good program to set our wallpaper. Uh, we're also going to need a text editor. Now, VI is on every Linux system, so we already have VI. Nano is probably also here, but what if we want to use a text editor that is not a terminal-based text editor? So I'm going to go with, you know what, I love Genie. So I'll install Genie, but you could install something like Mousepad, Leafpad, Featherpad, any of those plain text editors. There's a million of them in Linux. Uh, what else do we need? Let's see. What am I missing here? You know what? I think for now, we'll just run that. Uh, again, I, I tried to install something using sudo. You know what? Let me go ahead and install sudo anyway, because my home user, the DT user I created, is going to need sudo privileges anyway, so we'll get sudo installed. And I'll pause the video for a minute. All right, so we installed LightDM, our login manager. We need to go ahead and enable that service. So in systemd, systemctl, space, enable, space, lightdm dot, dot service. You guys can check this out in the Arch Wiki if you have uh, any questions or concerns about how to get LightDM configured. But basically, you install it, you install a greeter, then you enable the service with systemd with System CTL space enable space lightdm dot service. Now that we've done that, if I reboot the machine, I don't know. Will this boot directly to lightdm? We'll see. Let's get past the grub bootloader here. I usually have pretty good luck installing lightdm in Arch. Usually it just works, and in this case it does. This is lightdm, our login manager. Uh, do we have any sessions to log into? Yep, just the one that we set up already, OpenBox. So we installed OpenBox. It's already got an OpenBox session. Let's log in. And this is OpenBox. Yeah, that's OpenBox. There's nothing to OpenBox by default. You don't have a wallpaper. You don't have a panel. All you have is a right-click menu. Now, the right-click menu actually is populated with some stuff, but these are hard-coded uh, by default. And if you don't happen to have these programs installed, all these links are just dead links. Like Firefox, I could click on it, but I didn't install Firefox. As a matter of fact, I didn't install a web browser of any kind. And that's one of the big things I, I, I missed earlier. I, I installed Window Manager, File Manager, Login Manager, and I was asking, what else are we going to need? We're definitely going to need a, a web browser at some point. <laughs> Even, you know, because you're, you may have to get support, look up things in the Arch Wiki. So... I messed that up. I, I should have installed a web browser. One of the first things I should have installed, actually. But anyway, I'm going to open up a terminal. Hard coded here is Xterm is in here. Remember, I installed Xterm and Termite. So luckily, they had Xterm linked here, so I can get to an Xterm. Uh, if I type tent2, here is our tent2 panel. Let me open up another instance of Xterm. If I type nitrogen, we could choose wallpaper here, but the problem is we didn't install any wallpaper packs of any kind. So, how about sudo pacman dash capital S gnome dash backgrounds. DT is not in the sudoers file, so. We need to take care of that at some point, but for now, I'm just going to switch over to the root user. So, pacman dash s gnome dash backgrounds. All right, this is going to install the gnome wallpaper pack. Once we have these wallpapers downloaded and installed, then I can use nitrogen to set a wallpaper. All right, so that's finished. Let me exit out of the root user. Now I'll launch Nitrogen just as my home user. All right, when, here's how you use Nitrogen. You go to Preferences. All right, it's asking you to add some kind of directory, a directory that has 
wallpapers. GNOME-wallpapers is what we installed. You will find that under User, Share, Backgrounds, GNOME. Choose Select, hit OK, and all the wallpapers found in that directory appear right here. I'm just going to pick one, hit Apply, close Nitrogen, and there is our wallpaper. I'll minimize this. I won't kill it because killing it will kill the uh, Tint 2 panel. Now one thing I don't like is the wallpaper has some space around it, some dead space. Let me open Nitrogen again. I'm going to choose a wallpaper and instead of automatic here I'm going to choose how about scaled, hit apply, and now it makes it you know the full screen resolution. All right. Okay, I mentioned that we needed to go ahead and uh, add our home user, in my case the user DT, to our sudoers file. So he can have uh, root privileges, sudo privileges. So let me go ahead and switch over to the root user again in a terminal. So su, give it my root password. All right, and to edit our sudoers file, we need to type the command vi sudo, but you have to be familiar with vi vim to edit that file. I can navigate vim rather okay. I'm not bad with vim, but for those of you that are, don't know anything about vim, let's uh, run the vi sudo command, but instead of using vi, let's use nano as our editor. So let's type in all caps, editor in all caps, equals then lowercase nano. So all cap all caps editor equals lowercase nano space vi sudo. And this opens vi sudo in nano instead of vi. I'm gonna scroll down to this line here. It says uncomment to allow members of the group will to execute any command. So let's uncomment that. Uh, same thing if you want them to be able to do that without a password. No, I do want to have to give a root password to make changes. So I just want to uncomment that line. And I think I'm good. Uncomment to allow members of the group sudo to execute any command. Yeah, I probably want to do that one too. Yeah. Okay, I think I'm good here. Control X to exit out of nano. Control X. Do you want to write to it? Yes. File. Yep. Okay. Now let me exit out of the uh, SU, the super user. Now I'm back to being my home user, the DT user. Now the sudo work. Let's see. sudo pacman dash syu. Yep, it's asking for the root password. Yep. Now sudo is installed. All right, and I took a quick minute to get the VirtualBox guest editions installed because I'm doing this inside a virtual machine. Now, for you guys doing this on physical hardware, you don't need to fool with installing the VirtualBox guest editions, so I didn't include that on camera, but sudo pacman dash capital S, uh, what is it, VirtualBox dash guest dash utils. Reboot the machine and now you have a full screen resolution. So we're good to go here. Uh, now, I set the wallpaper with nitrogen. I have Tint2 still open here. It's running as I launched it in the terminal, so I gotta keep that terminal open. Now, I don't wanna to have to always launch Tint2 every time I log into OpenBox. I don't wanna always have to set a wallpaper every time I open OpenBox. Because by default, OpenBox is going, when you launch OpenBox, you're gonna come back to basically a blank screen, a black screen, no panel, no wallpaper, nothing. So we need to create some kind of auto start file. So let me open up the file manager. Do we have PC Man FM here in the menu? Yep, it's one of the uh, programs hard coded in that menu. We're eventually going to create a real menu. Uh, all right, I have a home folder, DT. Let's see, show hidden files. There is the folder dot config here. Let's create a folder called OpenBox. This is where all our OpenBox configuration files need to be. All right, and in this fo uh, folder we're going to create an empty file called auto start. All right, let's open auto start. By default it opens in Vim. Vim is our default editor. 
uh, to make you guys life a little easier and also you folks watching the video I'm gonna open this in Genie uh, Genie is much easier to use than Vim if you've never used Vim also Genie allows me to zoom in the text a little bit so I'm gonna view zoom in a couple of times all right our auto start file this is where all the programs we want to launch on startup need to uh, be placed in this file so how about tent 2 space and then an ampersand an and sign all right next line nitrogen we need to run the nitrogen command it's nitrogen space dash dash restore space ampersand okay well we'll just leave that for now we may add other stuff to the auto start in fact I would add quite a bit of other stuff but these are the really important ones right now our panel and our wallpaper I'm gonna close that I'm gonna log out let's go back to our light DM login manager here log back in and there you go I didn't have to set the wallpaper that time I didn't have to open a terminal and launch launch the tent 2 panel it's just took care of that with th that one auto start file so okay next thing I need to do is I need to get my right click menu configured uh, correctly instead of having all those links that were already hard linked by default most of those programs are not installed on the system so those links are useless I need to create a right click menu that actually has all the programs I actually have installed so there's a program in Arch Linux in the repos called menu maker for those of you that are going to be installing and configuring OpenBox on other distros, just go to Menu Maker's website. I think they're hosted over on SourceForge. And it's a very simple program to compile from source. Just compile it. It works the same. But luckily, I don't have to compile it here in Arch. I can just get it from the repos. So let me open up Xterm. And sudo pacman dash capital S space menu maker all one word is the name of the program give it the root password and now to run menu maker you type uh, m maker uh, open box and then I believe I have to give it a couple of flags I need to give it dash F space and then dash T for terminal I think and then I need to specify a terminal so space X term yeah, I think that was the command. I actually had to think about that. I haven't run that menu maker command in a long time, but I believe that is the command. So now I need to restart or reconfigure OpenBox. So go to System, Reconfigure OpenBox. Now we need to... Okay, that's it. That's our new menu. See how the menu changed? And now it actually includes programs I have installed. I actually have Nano, VI, and Vim. You know, I have Genie, Python, games. I don't have any games. I don't think Pac-Man is here. Uh, Network, Avahi, FTP, Mail, Talk. You know, all the stuff that was part of the base install. And then, of course, the shells. Or the I, I installed all of these. PCMan FM is our file manager. Termite and Xterm I installed for terminals. Uh, and that's basically it. Tent2 is here. Top. It's one of the GNU utilities that already installed on the system. All right, so now we have a menu. So we have a, a menu with all our programs. We have a panel. We have wallpaper. What's next? Well, I think the next thing I want to do is to speed this along a little further. Uh, I mean, I've got pretty much a working desktop now. I could live in this as is. At least I've got a menu. I've got a panel. I've got a terminal. Uh, I haven't installed a web browser yet, have I? Did I take the time to install Firefox yet? No, I have not. I need to do that. The next time I install something, I may go ahead and uh, add Firefox to the list of things I need to install here. But to speed this along, I'm going, going to go over to my GitLab repo at gitlab.com slash dwt1. That is my GitLab page, and I have three three different repos hosted over at GitLab. I'm going to go to my dot .files repo. And in my dot .files repo, you will find configurations for OpenBox. Uh, my pipe menus, auto start, menu, RC. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to clone that whole dot .files repo and pull out everything I need 
and uh, go ahead and get this open box session set up the way I like it. So I'm going to take a couple minutes and pull down that repo. All right, so I installed Firefox. I went ahead and pulled down my dot .files repo. Now it pulls it down as a zip file. I already know I didn't install zip or unzip or anything on the system yet. So let me go ahead and go to my right click menu under shells. I've got termite. So let me open up the termite terminal and sudo pacman dash capital S unzip. I need to install unzip to be able to unzip that zip file. All right. Now when I open up shells PC man FM. All right. Now I go to my downloads folder. There is my dot files. Now I need to extract it with unzip. Of course, I could do that through the command line, but let's do a graphical archive manager. Let's go ahead and install a pro proper archive manager of some kind. So sudo pacman s about xarchiver. xarchiver, all one word. All right. Now, when I right click on it, yep, open with xarchiver. Extract here. Yep, let's go ahead and extract it. Now I have my dot files. Let me open up another instance of PC Man FM. In one instance of PC Man FM, I'm going to go ahead and navigate to the dot config folder, open box. Now this is where our configuration files for open box have to go. Now I'm going to open up my dot files folder here. Go to dot config dot open box. And you know what? I'm just going to copy. I'm going to copy these pipe menus over. I'm going to copy my RC XML over. And I think that's good enough. Let me reconfigure OpenBox. So right click, go to OpenBox, reconfigure. Yeah, and that already changed some of what was going on here. Also, if it configured OpenBox the way I used to have it, the window with focus now, yep, has my key bindings. Yep. Nope for pseudo tiling. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Let me go ahead and straighten that back up. Now, so it's got all my key bindings. By the way, let me open up the RC XML file so you'll see what I'm talking about there. Let's move all of this out of the way. Let's go ahead and view, zoom. I'm going to zoom in here in Genie. This is the RC XML for OpenBox. This is where you set all your key bindings, your mouse bindings, all of that. Uh, for example, some of what I've got here, Control alt right goes to the desktop to the right. Control alt flip Control alt left goes to desktop to the left. Uh, a lot of this is in the default OpenBox RC.XML, but then I've added a lot of extra functionality. Uh, the Windows key and lowercase d is toggles show desktop so all the windows that are on the desktop go away windows key super key and D brings them all back up and so forth and so on and you saw some of the pseudo tiling I've got going on that stuff is actually right here a lot of that all right let me minimize genie all right another thing other than configuring open box. I also want to get tent2 looking a little better. So I'm going to go back to the dot config folder. There should be a folder in the dot config folder called tent2 and there is. And it's got the tent2 RC. This is the tent2 configuration. Now I'm going to go back to my dot files repo that I downloaded. Go to dot config tent2 tent2 RC and I'm also going to import these launchers here. Copy that over here, over right now we need to open a terminal. Actually, I think I've already got a terminal open. Yes. Kill all tent2. Kills tent2. Now let's relaunch tent2. Oh, yes. I like this theme a lot better. Oh, yeah. Now I like the tent2 theme a lot better now. What I don't like, I don't like the open box theme. I don't like the GTK theme, and I don't like the open box uh, window border theme. I really want to change those. Uh, in my GitLab repo, I have a theme saved. Let me go pull that down. So I'm going back to my GitLab page under Personal Projects. Other than the .files repo, I also have a repo called DT Dark Theme. 
It's a very original name. <laughs> and this is basically a GTK theme uh, that I've kind of hacked on a little bit. I haven't done much with it. It's not perfect by any means. But it does what I need it to. I'm going to go ahead and download this. Should just take a second. It's not a very big file. All right. Now let me open up a file manager again. Go to downloads. Here is DT dark theme dot zip. Let's extract it here. All right. Now we need to move this into our slash user slash share slash themes folder. Uh, to play around in the slash user slash share slash themes folder, we need to be root user. Uh, to, it's much easier to do all this in the terminal when you have to go ahead and switch over to the root user. So uh, let's go ahead and sudo. And you know what? I'll just launch pcmanfm as sudo. So this launches pcmanfm with root privileges. So go to the downloads folder, dt dark theme master, the unzipped one. I'm going to copy it with control C. Then I'm just going to change the directory user share themes. I'm going to copy dt theme, dark theme master right there. And now we can change our theme. To do that we need some kind of uh, program to change our theme. I didn't install it by default uh, you know earlier on so I need to do it now. sudo pacman dash capital S LX appearance is a good program for us. LX appearance, all one word. Let's get that installed. All right. Now let's, you know what? We need to add LX appearance to our right click menu. To do that, we need to run Menu Maker again. So I'm going to hit the up arrow key until I get back to that command. Yep. M Maker open box dash F dash T X term. All right. Now under utilities or system, maybe. System settings, yep, desktop preferences, right there. That is LX appearance. Nope, that's not. Okay. I wonder where it's at here. I would have thought that would be it, but it's not. Preferred applications, that's not it either. Hmm. You know what? I'll launch LX appearance from the uh, terminal. Just type LX appearance. All right, here it is. Let's switch over to DT Dark Theme Master. Hit apply. Okay, that looks good. I also need to change the open box theme, which is the window border. So to do that, we need to go to open box, uh, actually, system probably. Settings, open box configuration manager. Remember, we installed OBCONF, OBCONF. This is the open box configuration manager. In here somewhere should be DT Dark Theme Master. That's it. And now we have our dark open box theme. Open box is the window border and the right click menu. That is open box. All right, close, close, close. I'm actually going to exit out of open box. Go back to the login manager. Let's log back in. Yep, and my tent two theme has been saved. My open box theme has been saved. Now there's still some work to do. I don't like the icon set. I didn't. I don't have any fonts installed. Uh, I don't like whatever fonts these are. It's the the default Sans font, or you know, I want to install the Deja Vu font family. I want to install the Ubuntu font family. Uh, some other font families along the way. I want to get better icon themes installed. But you know what? For now, that is a pretty usable open box session that took me you know, all of, I don't know, a half hour maybe to get to this point. And that was doing it from scratch. I mean, no Xorg, no LightDM login manager, nothing. Uh, really, on most systems where you have a lot of this stuff, a lot of these programs already installed, Firefox and your text editor and your terminals, you can be up and running like this within 10 minutes. Again, if you need some help, pull all my config files down from my GitLab repo. I'll link to my GitLab repo in the show's description. Just uh, just steal all that from me, borrow it, uh, hack away at it uh, to your liking, and uh, and you'll be set, guys. Before I go, I do want to do a special thanks to my patrons. 
David, Carlos, Nick, Daniel, Brian, Leor, A.K., Ron, Keith, Dan, Michael, Tony, Bruno, David, Mike, Silvio, Omar, Mark, Mr. Neely Pops, John, Carl, Greg, Rob, Matt, Christian, Tiedemann, Stephen Z, Eduardo, Alex, Jake, Benjamin, Stephen B., Marcus, Interceptor, Tubella, and Humaid. Appreciate you guys. You guys help make this show possible. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.